Okay, so for this little product update, we're talking about some European locomotives that I just uh, obtained. As you know, I have a fondness for the some of the European stuff, especially the Swiss and some of the German uh, items. So these just uh, just procured these. Um, the in the back there is the SBB RE460. That was a pre-order item from Rocco for this year. Uh, next to that is a BR234. I believe called Ludmilla. Uh, that's a, another Roco item. I just got watching some videos and said that, that's a pretty mean looking locomotive. So decided to pick one up. And then finally to match the other diesel was a BR218 also from Roco. So these three I got. I'm not going to do a, a review of them because I'm really not qualified to. Just try to kind of show you what they are. Um, again I like this stuff. The, I have a lot of Swiss uh, rolling stock locomotives and been trying to get uh, also got some other DB electrics and uh, you know European rolling stock so I really like those so oh there it goes it's starting to do its sound so we'll give it a little bit of a run and again I'm not going to go through all the sounds and everything I just kind of briefly talk about what they look like and and uh, kind of how they're packed and some information you get with, with the locomotives because all the European folks who model these, and even uh, folks here in the States that are the European models, you know all this. Other folks, it might just be a kick just to kind of look and see what some of the some of this stuff is. So for the RE460, <laughs> gotta love those horns. And again, it does have uh, you know lights forward and reverse. So that's the 460. I'm just going to move him out of the way a little bit. And obviously he'll be used for some of the SBB passenger stock that we have. I don't know if you heard that brake noise. These all have kind of some interesting brake noises. And then next up we have the BR234, which is... Uh, number 346. So I'm going to turn his sound on. Now for this one I had to turn the sound down. It was cranked when I got it out of the box and it might have even damaged the speaker. I don't know but I really turned the sound down and I think the headlights are way too dim. They, they just do not seem bright enough. I don't know if anyone else has had issues with uh, this particular model from Roco. I have sent them an email. I tried to decode a reset. Didn't fix the lights. They're just way, way too dim. But uh, I don't know. See, the speaker sounds a little tinty, so I don't know if it got damaged. Because I first got last, you know, Steve and I put it on the track and it sounded horrible. It was really, really cranking. But we'll see. Um, I can always replace the speaker if I had to or get with Roco and see if they might help me out. And it needs some weathering of course and there are some detail parts that come with it that could be added so we'll see. But I like it. I think it's a cool looking. Kind of reminds me of a Another locomotive I like is the GE C39-8. I think it's a, just a brute looking locomotive and I thought that was a, a cool one. So. so I went ahead and got that. I'm going to run him up out of the way. And then we have our final friend here, the sound started there and I don't know if these sounds are totally prototypical to be honest um, 
I've watched some YouTube videos to kind of see what they sound like. But yeah, at some point in time, I'll worry more about that. I'm not super worried about it right now. For some reason, F3 turns that horn on and it won't turn off until you press it again. Because when I put this one on the rails, it was doing that. And I thought, wow, that does not sound very good. But the other horn is that. So that's that. Again, it's. You see, the headlights are a lot brighter on this one. So I think there's something up with the 234. I don't know. You know, I just like the European locomotives and I figured, hey, might as well, oopsie, <laughs> might as well get some diesels because at least it makes a little bit more sense since I don't have any catenary and I have a fair amount of electric locomotives. So you can see on the rear there they have the, I'm going to get these throttles out of the way here. It's got the red lights there on the rear. Let's move him up to the and the braking sound. And it's a little dimmer here, so you can see. I might show you look how the headlights are on the BR218, but on the BR-234, if I put him in... Alright, see how dim they, they just look so much dimmer. And that's that's max brightness. I did go in and change the CV to have them as bright as could be, and that's it. So I, I did do a decoder reset, but uh, that's that seems to be the best that we get, so... I don't know. And again, I haven't uh, taken a body shell off and seen if there's anything wrong inside or anything like that. I don't, I don't know that there is because they all run fine. They run very good, very smooth. I've been one of the nice things about working from home when I'm on conference calls, just kind of listening. I'll come down here and let them run or so. So all these have been run for about 30 minutes each direction to get some break in time. So that's those. So they're going to go with, uh, you know, if we ever have a European night, we'll get this stuff out. And uh, I really enjoy it. I, I like the European stuff. Always been fond of it. And uh, these are some things that I saw. I said to, to do a pre order for the RE460 to go with the other Swiss electric locomotives that I have. And thought it was time to get some diesel locomotives to have around. And these are interesting. It's always kind of fun to put these next to American rolling stock and see the size differences. You know, assuming these are uh, exact HO scale, it, uh, it is interesting how much larger some of the American stuff appears to be. But uh, that's not right or wrong. It's just, it's just interesting just to see that. So. so those are three new stable mates and one other item, or set of items that I got I want to show that I've always wanted to get. So let me just uh, show those real quick. So these are the SBB mail wagons that they're called postwagons. I've always liked these, seen them in videos quite a bit. And again, these I pre-ordered from Roco and they just came in as well. I've always been fond of these, so I picked up a it's a set of two. Uh one set you get two wagons and the other set you get two wagons and with this second set that I got, and I'll have the part numbers in a moment. It has a light on the rear and I didn't really know how it worked. There's not a whole lot of instructions with it. Let's move that building out of the way there. But on the rear of it, it has a light. And I figured out eventually how it worked. Right now you can see it's off. It's battery powered. But uh, let me show you the inside. And I, and I think I figured out how this thing right, works. So inside you can see there's a battery holder. And it came with batteries. I don't know how long they're going to last, but it did come with it. And I didn't understand, you know, how it worked. And there's a little circuit board in there. And there aren't a whole lot of instructions. And then I noticed, oh wait, there are some 
pickups coming from from the trucks I assume so if you take a look hopefully this will, I don't know if this will focus but on that truck you see that little I don't know if it's a little magnet or what it is but it's definitely there for a reason and kind of what I figured out was when you first put it on okay you know you can see the light is not is not on however once you start to roll it okay then you see the lights go on so that little contact there on the bottom must sense that the car is actually moving which then turns on the rear rear marker I'll call it I'm not sure what it's called in in Switzerland and then if it sits there for a while it'll automatically go off so that circuit board obviously must have some logic on it that detects motion and then after a certain amount of time turns the LED off so that's pretty slick because I really didn't know because it, we ran it around for a while and put the batteries in started blinking pulled it into the yard and then it went off I was like oh the batteries are dead well no I don't think so I think it's designed to work that way so that's pretty clever um, neat and I don't know how long the batteries will work I don't know if they're actually the, I, I would prefer it's all just power from the DCC and maybe there's a way you can convert it but it, it works well and the cover or the cover the, the roof I guess of the car it's just got some tabs on it and very easily it just just sets right in there click so there you go now the car is a little bit lighter the other cars do have some nice weight to them uh, there are weights inside because I, I checked but this car I thought was was kind of interesting and kind of clever the way they way they designed that so you can kind of see the the Fred so to speak the flashing uh, LED there on the rear of the car I liked it again I've always liked these cars and when these sets became available I pre-ordered them waited quite a while for them to finally come in but now I have a nice little set to go with some of the the other Swiss locomotives that I have so those were those were nice again by Roco so we'll take a real quick look at the at the part numbers uh, for those who may be interested all right, so just to show what I do with uh, the European locomotives, especially since most of them are dual-ended or double-ended or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they have a driver's compartment at uh, both ends. So on one side, I'll put in a Katy coupler. And on most of them, I'm finding the number 17. Katy makes a, a series of four, number 17, 18, 19, 20, different uh, shank lengths to fit the NEM coupler pockets. So on this one I took it apart and I did notice when I did this I did it on both sides just to because the one side I started on had a lot of grease in it. I mean a lot. Really really packed in there. Uh, those of us who've ever taken apart an inner mountain locomotive <laughs> know that feeling but uh, it was really bad so I just took some of that out. And you can see there there's the the KD. It fits in easy. There's little tabs there at the end. You just squeeze them to remove the European type coupler that you get with it and then you just slide the KD back in until it snaps at the end. Very, very simple. Works for me. Um, I, I think there's probably ways you could do it. Uh, well, it, it isn't really prototypical because European locomotives don't have KDs, but I think it looks kind of cool. I like the way it looks. So one end's got that and one end's got, of course, the normal... I'm not sure what you call those. Um, I know they're not like the Fleischmann type couplers. I'm not really sure what they're called. Uh, they're, maybe some of our European modelers will know. I'm just trying to grab one here. So here's one. Ah, where is it? Yeah, that's the typical that you get. At least with all of the Roco and a lot of the other European type models. I'm not sure what it's called. And, and they work fine. They're a, a devil sometimes to get uncoupled if you're doing, uh, you know, switching work or anything like that. All right, so that's that. So that's I got that installed, and on the uh, BR-234 on both ends, I took this four screws, removed this bottom cover to the truck. I took that off, cleaned up the grease, because uh, I didn't see any other way to get to the coupler. Because once the, the, the truck cover is on, it kind of covers the end of the coupler, so I didn't see any other way to do it. So that's what I did on these, and, I, and then all, all the uh, new locomotives I got, I put one KD on each end and left the European coupler on the other end.
Uh, there's the part numbers on the three locomotives we saw. In the top being the uh, SBB RE460 electric locomotive. And that's 73647 DCC sound. And then the DB218 DCC sound 72773. And finally the BR234 Ludmilla. DCC sound and that's item 72699 so those are the box designations for those three locomotives all right they're the post uh, the post the, well they are posts the uh, part numbers for those 76201 that's the one with the lights and the 76200 unlighted uh, era 6 post wagons really like them uh, they do come, you know, they're sets of two. They do have, again, a little bag of bits for adding details to them. And these are really the only instructions that you get. And they show you kind of where to add, add the items. Then they show you putting the two batteries in, but they don't really tell you a lot how it how it works. It shows the blinking light there. But uh, now I haven't read through here. Maybe I should, but it, it doesn't really, you know, say that, you know, battery powered, you know, once rolling, detects motion, light will blink for a certain amount of time, then turn off, but that's what it does, so, cool. So that's that. So those are the uh, the new European items that we obtained, and uh, hopefully it was interesting to some folks. I know not, not everyone's into the European stuff, and that's cool, but uh, we like it, so we uh, want to show you the stuff that we get every now and then. We don't get a whole, whole lot of it, but uh, cool stuff. So, uh, there you go. Thank you very much. Auf Wiedersehen.